Proverbs chapter 7. The other sin I want to touch on, which is so common among the youth, besides the wanting to alter your senses and get drunk and do the drugs and everything else, is fornication. As you start becoming a man and a woman and you, and you have changes in your body and you start having the desires that you, that you want to, you know, find a mate, find someone to marry, find, find someone to be with for the rest of your life and you start feeling the, the, the lust of your flesh that you, you haven't known before and you feel like, well, I'm an adult now, watch out. Watch out. Make sure you do it the right way. God's way is you don't have the relationship of having a physical relationship with someone else until you're married. Mar until someone's willing to commit to you and you're willing to commit to them, we're not going to have this relationship until first we're promising it's till death do we part. Amen. We're vowing we're staying together. Then we'll have that relationship. Look at Proverbs chapter 7, verse number 6. The Bible reads, For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths. He's looking at young people. He's looking out his window and he's saying, Yep, there's all those young people. He says, A young man void of understanding. There's a foolish young guy right there. I could see it. He could see it from his window. There's a fool. There is one that just has no understanding whatsoever. Why? What does he see? Here's what he sees. Verse number eight. Passing through the street near her corner. Her corner. Yeah, the person who has wisdom, it's not that hard to spot the whore. Right. It's not that hard to, to spot the slut right. that's out there. Yeah. When you have wisdom, you can spot it a mile away. Yeah. And you know what? Thank God he provides wisdom in the scripture. It talks about this woman near her corner and went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. There's one way of knowing her house, who that person, who this guy is just being really foolish with even dealing with her because she is wearing the attire of an harlot. And men, when you're looking for a wife, your eyes may be drawn to the woman who looks like a whore because she doesn't, she's just not wearing a lot of clothing. But that is not the woman that you want to marry. The woman that is showing everything off for the whole world to see. Don't think you're special. She may try to make you think that you're special. Don't fall for it. It's a trap. Look what it says here. She's wearing a tire of a harlot and subtle of heart. Verse 11. We get a parenthetical statement here giving some attributes, some more attributes. How did this guy with wisdom know it was her, this, that she's a wicked person? Well, one, she's wearing a tire of a harlot. Look at verse number 11. She is loud and stubborn. Not attributes of a godly woman. Not attributes of a woman that you want to marry or be involved with. Loud and stubborn. Yeah, amen. Her feet abide not in her house. Going off and getting involved in everyone else's business, being loud, being stubborn. Now she is without. Now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. She caught him and kissed him. Watch out for the forward women that are just seeking and trying to have this physical relationship. Oh, man. And just, just kissing and grabbing and touching and feeling and dressing like a harlot. Stay away from them. Why? They're trying to appeal to your flesh. They're just trying to suck you in. That's the goal. That's the motivation behind all of this. Watch out because one time of making a mistake and giving in to the desire in your flesh can change your life forever. You give in one time. You allow yourself. Well, let's, I'm not going to do anything. 
But let's just see where this goes. I kind of want to tiptoe a little bit on this line of getting in sin, so I'm going to keep talking to this person that just came up to me and kissed me and she looks like a hooker. Right. Instead of, nope. Right. And before you know it, like this man who's void of understanding, who wouldn't just get away, who wouldn't flee, you might end up contracting a disease. Now the person that you really love and they really want to, to spend your life with, you got to explain to that person, by the way, I have a filthy disease because I committed a filthy act in my youth. Or maybe you have a child with a person that they don't love you, they don't care about you, that's not the person you really wanted to marry, but man, she really appealed to my flesh. But I don't want to spend the rest of my life with that person. Are you kidding me? She's loud. She's stubborn. Yeah, I have nothing to do with her then. And now you're in this situation. Well, what are we going to do? And one sin leads to another. And then you get people talking about murder. Because you got yourself in a situation. Well, I can't murder so now what are we going to do? Do I get married to the loud, stubborn woman? Do I not? Do I, you know, life changed forever. No matter what choice you make, even if you make the best possible choice in the given situation, life changed forever. And it happens so fast. It's so easy to just make that bad choice and now the rest of your life is different. Didn't have to be that way. Listen to the Word of God. 